Welcome to Global Banking and Finance Review Awards. Global Banking and Finance Review is a leading brand name in the world of finance and banking. Their awards were created to recognize companies of all sizes that are prominent in particular areas of expertise and excellence within the global financial community. This time, we're proud to offer our award to the Sydney Stock Exchange for Most Innovative Stock Exchange Company Australia 2016. SXX, as it's known, provides opportunities for growth-orientated companies to raise the capital they need for expansion, especially from the Asia-Pacific region. Recently, we spoke to executives George Wang and Tony Saker about the SXX plans and growth in a live link between London and Sydney. Well, firstly, gentlemen, thank you so much indeed for joining us here on this link up with Sydney Australia and congratulations on the award that you've received. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a real honour to win such a prestigious award. Thank you. Well, I'd like to ask you a few more questions, if I may, about the Sydney Stock Exchange. And the first of those would be what kind of unique services are you able to provide? Yes, uh, Sydney Stock Exchange uh, was uh, formed since 1997 and uh, we bought in Sydney Stock Exchange uh, in 2008 during the financial crisis. We spent about seven years trying to change a lot of things in, uh, in the stock exchange, include the listing rule, include the business rule, include the system. And of course, we, 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 we add a lot of people and a lot of talents in. And uh, I think the, our new new stock exchange, because we are new and uh, we just launched uh, two, uh, two years ago, and uh, uh, currently the uh, globalization and the internet to make the uh, the world is is small. So the new stock exchange is just different with uh, the old 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 uh, old way to learn the stock exchange. Everything's on the internet, and uh, and and then we which we can uh, expand the capital market. Like for example, our our, our, our change in, in Australia is not only working in Australia; we can work globally. So, our strategy for our change is because we see uh, the Western world and Asia is got a big gap, and uh, Australia is, is in a very unique position. We are one of the most important Western uh, country in Asia Pacific, and uh, we got a lot of advantages. Is uh, we got the same time zone. And Australia got a very good uh, governor system and uh, stable government, and uh, it's a from 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 uh, it's a big country, uh, rich resource, agriculture, technology, and uh, a lot of professional finance people. So what we we, we see in the future now, especially now through internet uh, to to make the global uh, smaller and the globalization and. Uh, Australia is in a unique position to work as a, a bridge to uh, to lean uh, the Western uh, uh, capital market lean to Asia together. So our uh, chain, uh, the, the main purpose is to expand Australia capital market with China, with India, the Asia, the most emerging market, which like a big, uh, I think the next generation will be is a uh, economic growth area. So there's an opportunity for us. Yeah. You mentioned a little bit there about the internet and how things are developing very rapidly. How would you say that the business has changed over the recent years? How have things developed? Gosh, the, the market has changed a lot since 1997. I was trading very basic gold options back in 1997 and now I compare trading markets to, to how they are today. Certainly, internet speed has changed drastically and you see a substantial increase in, in ability for people to transact instantaneously. And obviously, you have such things as, as high frequency trading coming into the market, which obviously increases the speed. I guess the question, if you flip the question, is what, what maybe hasn't changed since, since 1997 is what, what we look at. And really, what that is, is, is the way settlement and clearing and registration goes through. We still operate on a T plus two basis. Whereas if you look at the way the front end operation is working, the front of house at, at, at organisations and trading houses, it operates instantaneously. And yet here we are still operating at a T plus two basis. So we believe, and, and it's certainly something we've been working on here at the exchange, is that that does need to change. And, and we do believe we're, we're trying to be at the forefront of that. I suppose one of the other aspects which, which George really touched on in, in his opening discussion there is connecting markets. And certainly there are wonderful ideas in a proliferation of countries throughout the Asia-Pacific region 
not just Australia, where, where the ideas and the business need to be connected to the capital. And that's certainly what we're trying to do at the Sydney Stock Exchange, create that financial bridge connecting Australian capital markets with, with Asian capital markets. Well, I think you may have touched upon that a little, but maybe we could expand on how you think uh, the SXX has changed compared with other competitors within your market over the years. Yes, I think, as I mentioned before, Sydney Stock Exchange is, uh, we are a new stock exchange. We are in, the, in a new world and uh, special now, the internet and the globalization. And our exchange is, Different because we are new, we hasn't got the like old, old, old a chance. They got uh, usually uh, the 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 white in the business. We need to do a lot of innovative, and the, the opportunity for us because the the globalization, the tech uh, tech space, and uh, we catch this opportunity. For example, we we spend uh, we develop our blockchain solution, try to develop our, our blockchain solution to enhance our our uh, a chance to minimize. Uh, the, 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 the the risk and the, then also minimize the cost and the, then to make a simple rise. So principally, what we what we are different is we want to cast this uh, tech uh, tech uh, what's that a uh, tech uh, bombing and then also we want to bridge the gap to from Australia to Asia, special China and Indian to bridge the. Uh, to bridge the capital market, the gap to let the, not only the deal flow on the cap, cap, capital flow between these uh, these two area. So, if we bridge to the China and Indian uh, as a put as a one capital market, and they, and then we can very easily to expand to the other Western world of the of, of the other Western world. Yes. Let's come on to financing now. How do you assist in the mobilization of capital for investment? Oh yes. We from uh, Sydney Stock Exchange, we got a multicultural team. We understand uh, we grow our business in Australia, but we we got a, we got team in Singapore, Hong Kong, and China, and we got office in Shanghai, Beijing, and Shenzhen. We last 20 years from uh, we we spend a lot of uh, time to try to build as a bridge and uh, from our, our 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 group from you, our, our group company from you, and. Uh, so what we what we understanding is uh, Australia capital market, Australia financial system, the standard. We are uh, adopt this uh, 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 financial uh, professional to expand to, to 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 China and Indian to bridge the gap. I think that is a uh, uh, that's what we different because we understand we got the people, we got the people, we got the history, we got the platform. Well, let's move on now to the service known as blockchain. First of all, could you explain a little bit about what blockchain is and how it's effective and useful? So Sydney Stock Exchange and our um, related entity, APX Settlements, have really been working on developing a blockchain-based settlement solution. So what that is, is our underlying objective is to create an instantaneous settlement and transfer upon trade platform, which can be utilised by both me as CEO of the Sydney Stock Exchange and our business, and also available to other markets. What we also have recently developed, which is quite exciting, is we've successfully prototyped a blockchain smart register for the uh, real-time issuance and allocation of securities. This is very exciting because what I alluded to before is as we move more to a T-based settlement rather than a T plus two, that obviously reduces transaction time and settlement time. It importantly reduces the cost of the transaction. It reduces the risk of the transaction. It reduces the compliance costs associated with transacting in the market. All of these factors substantially reduce the total cost and time taken to transact. And those costs, that money dollar saving, can then be reinvested into the market, which, which we think is excellent for companies, for brokers, for investors. Well, that certainly sounds very positive. Perhaps you could tell us a bit more about your other future plans for development going forward. Oh, sure. Um, so as a, as a business, we're looking to grow both domestically and internationally. Internationally, as, as George has mentioned before, you know, we're really trying to capture key markets. So if I look at internationally, two key markets offshore. One, international companies that might struggle getting a listing in their own country or their own jurisdiction principally because of the time it can take in some countries to actually register onto an exchange. Secondly, those types of international companies that actually have a nexus for business here in Australia, they actually have a subsidiary here or they transact here in Australia and that's, that's a very important component. 
The third component is our domestic listings, the companies that we want to receive from Australia that come on board to the, the, the exchange. And principally, as George has already alluded to, there are some key sectors that we're really principally going to target over the next 12 to 15 months. Those being in the mining sector, certainly the technology sector, the health industry, the agribusiness community, and then finally the property sector. Well, still looking to the future, can you tell us more about the plans you have to introduce a Chinese RMB board? Yes, we uh, we work on RMB board for a while, last few years, and uh, now is uh, this few years got a lot of progress. Australia and China decide uh, uh, like like RMB settlement uh, agreement. Australia and China sign a free trade agreement, and the and Chinese RMB is uh, joined the I uh, as a uh, joint IF, IMF for as SD, SDR and uh, a program. And the, which the pro uh, the, the progress for I think RMB will be for the in the future will be like uh, from international form you the progress will be uh, quite quite fast. Our uh, change we are we are we are working on to the company special from China if they come in the list we want we we are based on the account of Chinese uh, account RMB account and that the, the dollar will be based on the RMB and Australia dollar. And in the future, what we want to do is uh, we want to uh, uh, clear and settlement and the RMB and the special for the company which from uh, from from China they come in on some Australia company they want to expand the business to China, to which which to minimize the risk in the currency list. And uh, we do a lot of groundwork, and uh, we hope we we can finalize to uh, to launch uh, Liu trade, settlement, and uh, IMB, uh, 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 IMB board. Well, finally, can I ask you a little bit about your longer-term strategy? What are the plans there? I think our business, as I mentioned before, we, are, we want to bridge the gap from Australia with Asia. And uh, when we bridge our, 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 our gap with Australia with uh, Asia, what we mean bridge the gap, the worst thing, with Asia. And uh, I think from Asia, from you, two biggest market uh, is a multi market. The capital market uh, is, uh, is, uh, is not that mature than China's only last 30, 35 years. And uh, it's a lot big gap in there. Uh, a lot of things we need to do, but we already spend a lot, uh, a lot of time. We've got a lot of uh, skilled people. We've got multi, multi skilled people within this, uh, these two areas include the uh, Indian. If we, we if we can bridge the gap, China, China, India, with Australia together, I think we got a very big market share, and uh, we see the future for the globalization and the West, uh, Asia and West, uh, Western. I think special from capital uh, from you, they should move smoothly, and uh, they should more more business work together. I think will be will be good for. Uh, Australia, we good for Asia. I, I think George really did sum that up very clearly, but I think one of the key components there, looking at it from a macroeconomic perspective, is really the fact that we have seen some businesses, in, in certainly just talking from an Australian perspective, having to go overseas to try and source funding. The reality, as George points out, is there are magnificent capital opportunities available throughout the broader Asia, Asian region, and I think being able to create that substantial and, and found the strong foundations on a bridge between Australia and the broader Asia region is a wonderful opportunity. And, and what that will mean from a macroeconomic perspective is that ideas are kept within the region, the broader region, profits are kept within the region, and jobs are kept within the region. So from a macroeconomic perspective, I really do feel that the Sydney Stock Exchange has a unique position here because of our ability to connect those two substantial markets. Yeah, probably I can, I can add on. I, uh, as a, uh, Tony mentioned before, our stock exchange is a few area which are very which is our main focus. One is a uh, tech, and another one is mining, and then property, uh, food agriculture, and healthcare. This this area, from tech point of view, and uh, we want to to to, to tie the, uh, the the market from Australia, China, India to one together. And uh, not only from technology from you, from the capital from you, mm -hmm. which can support the tech company, especially in Australia. Australia, we got a, a very unique uh, education program to enhance a lot of very creating uh, talents. 
but a lot of a lot of research and uh, but uh, commercialized usually is commercialized in US but if we can if we can we can we can tie our uh, our strength technology uh, the talents combined with the market in China Indian and uh, and the capital tied together I think we be very very good to 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 to, to help Australia to enhance our uh, 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 like uh, employment, enhance our talents, and help our, our business in Australia. We we believe Australia should become uh, as a most important financial hub in Asia Pacific, and uh, we we believe our exchange, our stock exchange, Chinese stock exchange, we can we 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 be one of the important force to bridge the gap, to build the bridge, to enhance the 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 the, the, the capital. The, 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 the technology and the, the business to, uh, as a one, uh, one society together. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today from Sydney. Congratulations again on the award. Yeah, thank thank you. you.